everybody. I'm Nathan, that's Bing Bing, and you're watching How to Train Your Fish. Today, I'm going to talk about what would happen to your fish tank in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Who would live longer, you or your fish tank? And it turns out, your fish tank is going to be just fine without you when the zombies come. So, before I explain why your fish tank is going to be fine, let me explain why you will not be fine. The odds are simply not in your favor. It all comes down to the math. Everyone thinks that when the zombies come, that they're gonna be Daryl Dixon or Tallahassee. But statistically speaking, you are far more likely to be this guy. It turns out that you have a 0.018% chance of surviving the zombie apocalypse for one month. Now, if you survive more than one month, your odds of survival do go up, but I'm just talking about the average person here and how long the average person will survive. I got that number by hunting down an old interview by Robert Kirkman, who is the definitive source on all things zombie walker related. He said that in the Walking Dead universe, for every living human, there are 50,000 walkers. Now, somebody smarter than me used that ratio to calculate that there are 63,000 living Americans left in America after the zombies come. So then I went about calculating your chance of being one of those lucky 63,000. So what I did, I did some math, I took the population of America and I divided that by 63,000, moved the decimal place, and boom. You have a 0.018% chance of survival, or to put it another way, a 2 in 10,000 chance. So now let's talk about your fish, and let's be honest, you've set a pretty low bar for them. Also, I'm operating under the assumption that zombies leave fish tanks alone. I know they eat other animals, but I think since the fish are in a glass box, the zombies probably are not gonna notice. Imagine a room with a large freshwater planted tank with lots of decorations. A window. And imagine that in all the chaos, you forgot to close said window. And lastly, a single goldfish in the tank. Oh, and I almost forgot. This scenario only works in Florida. Now, the first thing to go in a zombie apocalypse, besides you, is gonna be the electricity. But, people have been keeping fish long before we had, you know, electric heaters, uh, lights, or pumps. People have been keeping fish uh, in something that looks kind of like an aquarium since ancient times, and it especially got popular during the Victorian era. I made a whole video on it. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. You don't need all that fancy stuff to have an aquarium. All you need is bacteria to keep the nitrogen cycle rolling. So if you'll remember in our scenario we've set out, there's a window. The sunlight from that window is gonna keep the plants growing and the nitrogen cycle rolling. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what the nitrogen cycle is, it's basically the biological process that converts fish poop into nitrate. It goes like this. It goes poop, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. Now, the nitrates are what you take out of your aquarium when you do water changes. And while nitrates are not as harmful to fish health as ammonia is, they can still kill a fish in high enough levels. So, if you're not there to do water changes, what's gonna happen? The plants will come to the rescue. Aquarium plants pull nitrates out of the water. And, in a large enough system, it can become self-sustaining. If you have a big enough aquarium with enough water and enough plants, those plants can pull out enough nitrates to keep that aquarium balanced and sustain the fish indefinitely. And also, you can't have too many fish in there. So like in our scenario, where we've just got one, he would be okay for a really long time. But, in a smaller aquarium, like most people have, the levels of nitrates will eventually become fatal despite the plant's valiant efforts. You know, in a strange way, this is like a real life plants versus zombies. Most fish can survive a high level of 
anything as long as that level rises slowly. So for example, you know, you should never do it, but if you have a goldfish in a bowl, you put it in there with fresh water, the reason it can survive in that bowl for so long is because the ammonia and the things that eventually do kill it rise slow enough for the fish to adapt to them. The reason fish die when you put them into an aquarium, if you don't acclimate them, if you don't give them time to get used to your water, it kills them because of the shock, not necessarily because of the water quality. Because of this, nitrates are probably not gonna be what kills your fish. So that brings us to our next question. If you're not there to feed it, What's your fish gonna eat? In this scenario, we've got a goldfish in our tank. And by the way, if you guys want enjoy this and you want me to run another scenario on something like a reef tank, I can do that too. But back to our goldfish. Goldfish will eat just about anything when they get hungry enough. They'll eat plants, they'll eat other fish, they'll eat algae. Ah, they'll eat algae. So if you'll remember, the aquarium we've got in the room is next to a window. So the longer that thing sits there, as the nitrates go up, the algae will grow faster and faster. Now, most aquarists hate algae, but goldfish, however, will eat it if they get hungry enough. So algae is gonna be one of the things that partially sustains this goldfish, but that's probably not gonna be enough for it. It's gonna need something else. If you'll remember, I told you at earlier that in the, in the hassle and the chaos of the zombie apocalypse, you know, either the window was broken or maybe you forgot to close it. That's really important now. Because the window is open or broken, mosquitoes are gonna fly into that room and they're gonna lay their eggs in that tank. Mosquitoes love still water and an aquarium without a filter is going to be very, very still. So the mosquitoes are gonna come in, they're gonna lay their eggs, and then the goldfish is gonna eat the mosquito larva. Now, this is why people keep goldfish in ponds all the time, because it cuts down on the mosquito population. So when the mosquitoes lay their eggs in there, the goldfish go and they eat the larva. Okay, well that takes care of the first two problems, water quality and food. So really, honestly, this could last indefinitely, in my opinion, if it's a large enough tank. But unfortunately, there is a silent killer on the loose. Evaporation. Have you ever noticed how if you know you leave your aquarium alone for a couple weeks, the water level dips and you have to add more? It's because the water is slowly evaporating. And that's what's eventually gonna happen to the aquarium in our scenario, unless like the roof caves in or something and water can somehow drip down into the tank. But you know, I'm not gonna be that hopeful. Now there's a lot of factors that can influence this. If the tank has a lid, the evaporation will happen much more slowly. But then the mosquitoes can't lay their eggs in there, so it is down one food source. If it's in somewhere humid, you know, like Florida, uh, that can also help too, because the more humidity in the air, the slower the water in the tank will evaporate. So eventually, the water in this tank will evaporate to the point where it gets too low, the nitrates become too condensed, and the fish doesn't have enough water to survive. That's gonna be eventually what leads to the death of our fish. However, depending on the size of the tank, whether it's you know a 55 gallon or 125 gallon, I really believe that your fish could last anywhere between six months and a year without you there to take care of them. Oh boy, oh boy, that was fun. Well, I hope you guys tune in next week for another exciting episode of How to Train Your Fish. Also, be sure to subscribe. I do videos like this all the time. See you next time.